Absolutely. I can't agree with you more right there. That's something that I don't think people realize. And that's something that I don't think the Democratic establishment realizes, right? Um, I, I know you're running in a in a tough race down there. You're running in a tough race against um, the establishment pick, which is uh, Patrick Murphy. Right. You're running against um, a, a progressive uh, sweetheart. Well, I guess he probably wouldn't appreciate me calling him a sweetheart, but still, he's a progressive darling, uh, right. Alan Grayson. And But you are a progressive yourself, and you, you not only fight for African-American issues, Issues, but you also stand for uh, just in look at the website. Uh, you, actually, don't yes. let me put words in your mouth. Tell me all the other ways that you are a progressive candidate. I, I'm a progressive candidate because I want to put real proposals on the table on how to incentivize more corporate profit ending up in the hands of employees. Because, you know, it's, it's always been a meme of the Republican Party that, uh, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. That is just not true. That is just not true, and and I think we've got more than ample evidence to prove that. So I want to I want to tinker with our tax code to create incentives for for employers to put more money in the hands of their employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I have some knowledge of that tax code and I have some knowledge about how compensation is derived, I actually have something to say about that. I also happen to know why it is that our union movement is dying through death through a thousand cuts. Right? Mm -hmm. We started out somewhere around 22 percent of private employers unionized. We're now under the under seven percent, and I can tell you why that is. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're dealing with a union movement that's a bit of an anachronism. It it, it starts from the premise that you're going to go to an employer and you're going to work there for 30 years and earn a retirement and be straight. Well, that's not how millennials think of their work life. Right. And because of that, they're not seeing the value of union membership in their life. And I want to change that. So I have a real proposal on how to deal with that and how to change and how to make unions relevant in today's more uh, moving, more malleable and more individual uh, work life kind of situation. So I, that's something I talk about. I talk a great deal about environmental issues. I talk a great deal about how we treat our veterans. I am a veteran um, and I have a real proposal on how to clear these backlogs of people who have complex uh, claims for benefits. Um, these are things that I talk about and I, I don't know that, you know, I hate that word progressive just because it makes it seem like it's somehow fringe or it's not mainstream or whatever. Look, this is common sense, people. Mm -hmm. This is what's decent and rational and pragmatic. And by the way, it's as conservative because it makes money sense as it is progressive because it's morally sound. <laughs> I, I actually like that. Uh, that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, so, okay, so I want to double back. I want to double back and I want to talk about the union issue. Yes. Um, I, I want to talk about a couple of things that you mentioned I want to unpack, but I have a question from uh, from one of our chat rooms already. Um, they said that they're a fan. They really like Alan Grayson. What yes. separates your campaign from Alan Grayson's campaign? Uh, you know, Alan is... I consider Alan a friend. He and I get along really great. We've debated a couple times now, and we've had wonderful debates. I don't throw punches at Alan, and so far he hasn't thrown punches at me. Uh, the difference between him and he and I are what we focus on, mm -hmm. our background, our temperament, you know, our our style. You know, do I disagree with Alan on some things? Yes, but for the most part, he and I are trying to 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 roll in the same direction. What's different is that I put different kinds of proposals on the table than he does, and I focus on different things than he does. Uh, we are different voices in this chorus. But um, you know, where I where I stand most with Alan, right? Okay, and where he and I have seen most eye to eye is in our refusal to be cowed by a party machinery. Okay. So when the party came out, you know, sort of in this coordinated effort to assassinate him because they want him out of Patrick's way. Rhetorically, rhetorically speaking. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. I was the first person to say this ain't right. Right. This right. ain't right. Their, their problems with Allen's, um, you know, hedge funds, if they were legitimate issues, and they may be, the question is, why now? Yeah. Hedge funds didn't come up overnight. Mm -hmm. He's had these hedge funds for some time, and they didn't seem to be bothered with it when he was in Congress. Mm -hmm. So why are they bothered with it when he's running for Senate? That's disingenuous. You know, I saw I saw when they I saw the party machine crank up in favor of Patrick Murphy, and actually, um, I I 
Um, I want to say I I was I'm fond of Patrick, right? But I disagree with Patrick on some of the latest yeah. things that he's voted on, on yeah. some of the things that he stands on. I'm really shocked by some of those things. Uh, and I'm not going to make this a, a, a jump on Patrick night. But one thing I did see was the party machine in Florida and the United States. The overall oh, Democratic yeah, the whole thing because he needs the help. He needs the help. Right. Well, he was twenty down, point down, twenty points uh, against Alan Grayson. Then he gets an endorsement from Barack Obama, and I saw you actually speak positively or uh, affirmatively of Alan Grayson because of the uh, I don't have a better word than shenanigans that were being pulled against him. So um, I really, you know, I think it's commendable you two progressives uh, running in the same race, and and you're willing to say, you know, this is just not right what they're doing to Alan Grayson. So I think that's commendable. But could you? Tell me more about where you part ways, not only with uh, Alan Grayson, but with Patrick Murphy. What what key um, issues separates you from them? Okay, well, you know, Patrick's claim to fame, essentially, is how well he works with Republicans. Mm -hmm. That he's the guy that can bridge the gap. But his definition of bridging the gap is that he votes with them on their pet thing. That's his definition, because I have yet to see any example of him getting Republicans to vote with us on anything. So it's right. a one-way ratchet. And not only that, but it's on things that, are, you know, if you're going to compromise, don't compromise on things that don't get you anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Compromise on something that's critical or something that's positive or something that's going to get something positive done. What he does is... He keeps talking about how he votes his conscience, but the problem is it's a Republican conscience. I mean, Patrick Murphy was a Republican for the duration of his life. He became a Democrat five weeks before he ran for office because it was politically expedient. Now, that's cool. Whatever. You know, that's cool. I like Patrick Murphy as a person, too. But you know what? I'm a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And I don't know any Democrat in the entire country who didn't know that Trey Gowdy's Benghazi hearings were a witch hunt. Right. I've never met a Democrat that didn't see that coming, and yet Patrick voted for that. And that's kind of like, okay, I don't mind you voting with Republicans, but I don't like you voting for Republicans to hurt Democrats. That's a problem for me. Mm. Okay, I, you know, his whole vote with the with the Syrian refugees. Right. That's know, the one I, I'm... I have a real problem with that. Yeah. That that's a that's a kind of that's a, that's a gut check kind of thing that tells me that your gut doesn't tell you that discrimination is wrong. That's a problem for me. That's so, the one I was just looking up, Pam. That's the one I was looking up. There was something I saw his name on that made me so upset to say that to to even previously say that I was fond of his campaign. But it was the it was the vote on uh, the Syrian refugees, making the statement that we didn't want uh, Syrian more Syrian refugees coming to the United States. He aligned with the Republican. Question is, you know, we could vet them ad infinitum, but what you know, again. There's no 100% in anything. So if the standard is we got to be 100% positive, that's just another way of saying we're going to keep you out. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's just call a spade a spade. And I guess my problem with Patrick is that what we're looking for in a senator is someone who is a standard bearer of democratic values. Okay, not just yet another vote amongst 500 or so, right? We're talking about 100 people who set the tone, who set the agenda, mm -hmm. who speak and advocate for democratic values. And I've never seen Patrick Murphy lead on any kind of thing that we hold dear ever. <laughs> That's not leadership to me. What he does is he gets on and gets along. That's his strength. But he's the Republicans' favorite Democrat. So for me, eh, that's not a glowing endorsement. I love it. I love it. I'm smiling because I I love it. All right, so that's Patrick, right? And and I, I you know there's a there's a couple of votes that he made that I'm like, okay, Patrick, I, we have to have a conversation. Um, and uh, he it was he you know I'll I'll reach out to him again. Um, uh, he didn't reach out to me the last time I asked him about the Syrian vote, but I'll reach out to him again. Um, now let's talk about a little bit more about Alan Grayson. Um, you guys get along. You guys have a lot in common. Both of you are progressive candidates. Both of you. Uh, I and, and my memory slips me. It's been a long week. Did did uh did Alan Grayson somebody in the chat room where you may know Pam. Did Alan Grayson endorse Bernie Sanders? He did after, it was kind of an interesting evolution. Uh, months ago he was announced to be one of Hillary's team in Florida. I'm not exactly yeah. sure what that means. Yeah. But then, and he was silent for a long time and then at some point I saw an email come across asking people to vote for who, which candidate he should endorse mm -hmm. uh, and who should support. Apparently, Alan is a super delegate. I, did, I wasn't aware of that, but he is. And so he was asking whom people wanted him to vote for in the election, and then, it, uh, and then uh, at some point he came out to endorse Bernie. That was a little weird to me. I mean, 
I, I can't speak for Alan as to what was going through his mind, but I mean, he's supported principally by progressives, so why wouldn't he just like already know where they were going with that? But whatever, you know, I mean, it, his process is his process, you know, whatever. I love it. I love it. You're right. If your prayer, if this is the thing, a lot of people got mad at me about uh, about Elizabeth Warren because I love Elizabeth Warren, right? But when she didn't, when she didn't endorse Bernie Sanders, I, you know, I got, I got hurt. I was upset. I was butt hurt. I'm gonna tell you, brother, to pump the brakes. Here's the truth about endorsements. Mm -hmm. People don't endorse because they've done a real thorough search on the candidate. Mm -hmm. They endorse because there's something in it for them to endorse. Mm -hmm. It is a quid pro quo. The principal question you ask yourself when it comes to endorsing somebody is, does this help me or does this hurt me? Not okay. the candidate. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I've never chosen who I was going to vote for based on some endorsement. Like, I can't think of a single endorsement that I'm just waiting for that's going to clarify for me which what direction I'm going to go. My instincts always tell me who to vote for, and my instincts have been right. So I go with that. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, but um, in terms of uh, Alan Grayson and his endorsement, and the Johnny come lately a little bit with his endorsement, he was on um, Hillary's leadership council, and then later talking about Grayson later on endorsed uh, Bernie Sanders. You've already you support Bernie Sanders, uh, if I. Uh, Am I not mistaken? You, you, you uh, I support Bernie, but I, you know, like I said, I've, I've stayed out of the endorsement game altogether. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't get in that game. Um, yeah.